Okay, so um, first of all, congratulations on you know, public sales uh, for 70 million US dollars uh, and your uh, very successful minute launch, uh, the Lina Ray. So, um, congratulations on that. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so um, uh, before we start the interview, can you uh, say something to our beloved uh, Coin68 viewers? Yeah, uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, it's great to, you know, contribute to, to some content for Coin68. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of, of Vietnam as a country, and I've spent a lot of time in Vietnam over the last 10 years. Uh, so yeah, more, really happy to be talking to your, your followers and uh, hope they enjoy the interview. Okay, so uh, let's jump into the interview. So the first question is that, how do you assess the performance of uh, the latest public sales on Coinlist? Yeah, so, um, you know, we're of course, we're really pleased uh, with the performance of the sale. So it's sold out in about three or four days. Um, initially, it was, it was planned to be open for two weeks. Um, and we hit that target, uh, as I say, after the first three or four days. Um, and we actually went sl slightly over the target um, and raised a total of 72 million um, in, in that time period. Okay, so uh, it's nearly 7 million US dollars. It's uh, the previous time and 100, uh, 120 million dollars in total. So uh, what do you think is uh, is the key thing that attributes to that outstanding performance? Yes, yeah, so um, actually just to clarify, we raised 28 million in a private round in early 2018, and then we raised 72 million in this public sale. So in total, we raised about a, just under 100 million uh, in total. Um, what I would attribute some of the success to, so I mean, obviously the, the private round, we had a lot of, uh, it was all in institutional investors. Um, and coming into the public round, I think there's, there's a variety of factors, right? I mean, firstly, we'd already demonstrated the value of the project um, previously, right? So the, 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 the project had been building for close to two years. It was weeks away from, from mainnet launch. Um, so I think that kind of gave a lot of confidence to people that, you know, we had this real product and we were ready to launch it. Um, I think there's, there's, there's many different factors, of course, right? The, the quality of the team that's involved, um, you know, the actual technology behind it uh, that we're building and how we're positioning the product that's quite different from a lot of other products that are, that are currently out there. Okay, so um, the next question is about your future plan. So uh, how do your team decide to allocate and spend the fund raises from the previous sale? Yeah, so um, in terms of the, the token allocation and things like that, we have a, a pretty big document explaining, you know, the, the, the different funds within the, the, the token ecosystem and what those different funds will be used for. Um, in terms of spending of, of the raise funds, it's very much um, operational costs to keep the team, the team running uh, and developing the product. And of course, the, the other associated teams, the marketing and community teams, the business development teams. Okay, so um, so it, it seems like you you came up uh, about the fundamental of technology, and uh, you say that you you position yourself as a Ethereum terminator, and uh, what what are the competitive advantages um, make you really believe in, in in this project? Yeah, good question. Um, First thing I'd say is, I don't know who said that we were positioning ourselves as the Ethereum killer. Uh, it, in fact, we, we prefer to compare ourselves to a direct competitor to Bitcoin um, rather than a competitor to Ethereum. Okay, so the project is actually much, much closer to Bitcoin than Ethereum for several reasons, including the UTXO model we use. Um, that we're proof of work and, and we'll be sticking with a proof of work um, network and, and many other factors, right? I mean, personally, I see us more like 
Bitcoin with added functionality on top, right? So you can, it, the network is very similar in many ways to Bitcoin, which has taken Bitcoin a bit further, right? So we've implemented things to directly address some of the challenges that Bitcoin faces. And we've also implemented a lot of the kind of Turing complete and smart contract functionality that you currently have on Ethereum. And it's kind of like we brought, brought the benefits of Ethereum over to, to, to Bitcoin. Okay, so uh, I, I understand your answer as you combine the, the advantages of both Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Exactly, and then, and then on top of that, solving several of the challenges that exist in both of those different platforms. Okay, so um, uh, as to my knowledge, uh, the public sale has launched and it's still a lot of things to do. So um, uh, how can you, how can, what is the plan to attract more DApp developers to enter this platform? I mean, what? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good question. So, um, you know, of course, one of the most important things is about building out the developer ecosystem. So we want to try and build, we want to try and recruit as many community developers to come in, learn the CKB platform and, and hopefully build real use cases uh, on top of CKB. There's also a lot of other stuff outside of just directly decentralized applications to, that can be built, including, you know, side chains, layer two scaling solutions and, and many different types of projects. But we want to really, you know, bring as many developers in who are interested in utilizing CKB in any way that, that, that they want to. Um, the way we plan to do that is, of course, through a variety of different initiatives. Um, one of the biggest ones is, of course, our ecosystem fund. So about 18% of all the tokens that were issued is, is in the ecosystem fund. And that will be used specifically for grants and bounties for development projects. So we, we are working on it now and hopefully we're going to open it up pretty soon, uh, beginning or, or early into next year. And it will allow any, anyone, any developer to come in and request grants for building certain projects within the Nervos uh, ecosystem. Uh, so that's obviously a, a, a big thing. Um, you know, there's, there's a ton of other stuff we do in terms of, you know, trying to create the best tooling and, and ecosystem for developers to come in and, and build on CKB as easy as possible. Also learning, you know, how, quick, how easily they can quickly learn all, all the technology and, you know, get to the point where they can start utilizing this stuff. Um, you know, things like hackathons, meetups, all of this stuff all around the world. Uh, lots of stuff going on to try and encourage developers onto the CKB and Nervos network. Okay, so um, uh, that's about the technologies. Uh, so right now we're going to shift to uh, the tokens um, issues, right? So your CKB tokens um, have have been listed on so many exchanges. Um, uh, it can be um, um, Hobi, Gate.io, Bitmax, right? So uh, what is what is the reasons that the CKB token are listed on so many exchanges like that? So will it affect the token price? Uh, it's an interesting question. So we don't we're not directly involved in exchange listings. Um, we don't go out trying to get our token listed on exchanges. Um, the reason why I guess so many project, so many exchanges have listed the token are because they see it as a very credible project. Um, and so they think there's a lot of benefit to that. I mean, I can't speak to why a specific exchange would decide to list CKB other than, you know, um, we're obviously a pretty big project um, that, that's just launched the main net. So maybe they think it, it's a good idea for them, them to, to list it. Um, that's, that's pretty yeah, yeah. much the, the only answer I can give you for that. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, so uh, the last question is that, what is your plan for Vietnam market, especially because I think that in this market, we have a lot of uh, talented developers in blockchain industry. So uh, what is your plan for, for, for this uh, specific market? Yeah, so, you know, I think Vietnam is a great country and it's got a very large developer 
kind of community, right? Not just in yeah. blockchain, but, yeah. but, but, but kind of generally. Um, so of course we see Vietnam as a really high value market um, for CKB. And we're already doing certain initiatives here to try and create awareness for the project. Uh, and, and we want to keep doing that, right? So um, I mentioned the grants program earlier. So of course that's open to anyone worldwide. Um, and we also, you know, we, we, we love uh, Vietnamese community members who want to contribute to the project in any way, whether that's through development or whether it's through creating community groups, helping kind of teach people about Nervos and CKB, spread the word and that type of thing. We're, we're always uh, encouraging those types of people. Um, we've been doing several meetups in, in Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, um, and I believe we'll be continuing to do that. Um, obviously, you know, working with, um, with, with media guys and publications like yourself it is, of course, one, one part of that as well. Uh, and, and, and we're hoping to just keep moving forward with that type of direction and, and slowly grow the, the community here in, in Vietnam. Okay, so, um, uh, so that's all for our interview today. So one more time, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And uh, I hope that uh, Novus will achieve uh, a lot more success in the future. So one more time, thank you.